Hello everyone, welcome to Basket News. I'm the host Donatos Rubanas and today we're visiting Belgrade. Uh, and my guest is the big man of Partizan Belgrade, Zach Lede. Zach, welcome to the show. Pleased to be here. Good to see you guys doing good for the European basketball culture. It's always a pleasure to see you guys. Oh, you really follow basketnews.com? Um, okay, I got you on this. Hey, I mean, I try to like dibble and dabble and see like what's going on, you know, yeah. around the news cycle. You know, I don't follow a lot of news outlets. Okay. But I just kind of try to stay up to date with what's going on with uh, teams a little bit, uh-huh. not too much. I try to focus on my team, so for the most part. That's cool. That's yeah. cool. Uh, look, you're known for your backpack uh, stuff, and I'm not so sure if that's the new item on your backpack. But I've heard that you were uh, big on your notebook, and I was told that you you were even reading your notebook during games. What's on that notebook? Um, I just take a lot of notes. I just try to um, take a lot of notes for myself and um, for my experience, just going into different games. Uh, you know, Europe is kind of, it's big, but it's kind of small. You play against the same guys um, and you run into guys a lot. So little things that you notice that you can use for advantage for yourself. I try to take that down or just little things like some of the coaches that I play for has said, I can use to my advantage. I try to write it down too, and just try to just um, just be as competitively advanced as possible. There's also some quotes on that notebook, right? Yeah, uh-huh. little quotes here and there that coaches have said. I mean, uh-huh. some of the guys that I play for have helped me a lot in my career, obviously, and I've learned a lot. So I try to just go back. Maybe I'll scroll back and be going through another page, and then come across something. Is there anything like, a, let's say, your favorite uh, quote, the most inspiring quote, the quote you love the most? Uh, I can't think of a favorite off the top of my head right now. Yeah. I'll have to go through it personally uh. and just like look in and then I could tell you, but I can't think off the top of my head like a favorite one. And talking about your backpack, I was wondering, was there any crazy story when you left your backpack? I mean, ba- your backpack is everywhere in practices, during games. Was there any story when you left it somewhere and you kind of got in trouble? Um, I've never left it before. Crazy story, when I was in Greece, um, somebody broke in my car. Okay. The original backpack, someone broke in my car, actually took it. And so it was gone, so I had to replace it. When I was in Greece, when I was at Olympiakos, it was like right before we played the cup when we were pl- about to play Panthinaikos. So that was kind of a crazy story with the bag. But I've had it my whole career since I've been in Europe and it's helped me like kind of organize and just lock in part of my focus as well and going into games. So what that burglar in Greece found on that backpack? Was he disappointed? Uh, <laughs> uh, luckily, I didn't have that much in it. Um, I was at like dinner or something like that. So I didn't have like my stuff like prepared for the game with me mm. or nothing like that. So it was just kind of just sitting in the car just lagging. So mm. luckily he caught me on a lagging day. But. <laughs> I mean, somebody else could have found all the stuff that I prepared for to go into games with and different things like that. So, listen, Zach, you joined one of the greatest coaches uh, coaches in Europe, uh, Jelko Bradovic, and I will try to bring you to three different situations, and I will ask you what Jelko said to you in that situation. So, the first moment was the game in, against Hamburg, and that situation where you're chasing the ball and you kind of, you know, jumped on the uh, scorer's board. And I remember Jelko came to he was like did something like this or that and he he was yelling something at you i mean it was a good positive uh, stuff but do you remember the exact words uh, he uh was saying? i mean uh i wouldn't i won't really like say like the bad language or nothing like that but he was just like good stuff boy like i mean i can't re- i couldn't really hear him i mean the crowd was so loud and my adrenaline was just pumping and when my adrenaline is pumping like my i just kind of i don't want to say out of body experiences but i just go and i just try to play and just get my all for my team and just do whatever it takes especially in uh big games and big moments to try to win so i just win i just did naturally i just win i just dove and then i didn't even really know he was behind me like that i knew my teammates were coming to pick me up and then everyone was showing me later on video what happened and stuff so good moment Uh, the next good moment was uh, when he recruited you to join Partizan. Uh, what do you remember about the first conversations, the conversation with uh, Jelkom, probably the most decisive conversation because, you know, looking aside, it seems like a big thing to change your fi- final four team to Eurocup team, even though Jelko is on the project. But what, 
what he was saying to you, you know, to recruit you to Partizan? Uh, honestly, he didn't have to say much to me. I mean, we probably got our first first conversation probably lasted like I want to say less than a minute. We just talk, enjoy our summer, uh, work, be prepared to come and uh, tell me the date. And then as we as I got here, we went to training camp and um, we started to discuss more what was going on, um, what he wanted, um, the style he wanted to play. And it fit the style that I want to play hard, tempo, fast basketball, up and down um, and smart basketball, as I've learned to play over the years from some of the people that I've learned from. And so it literally fit what I was trying to accomplish. And uh, we've been able to win a lot of games this year. So. What Jelko said after the last uh, Serbian Cup final against uh, Crvena Zvezda? Um, I mean, it was a very emotional match. Uh, we wanted to win very bad. Um, and we came in and he just said that we could just got more work to do. He said that this, uh, that his best teams, that he doesn't, there's not moments where he hasn't had to struggle with his team, you know, to get to a tr a, a accomplish titles and big goals that we set. And so um, we just have to focus and keep going. Um, we have a young team. Um, they have an experienced team. They have a lot of older guys. And so we just have to keep on going every day and just keep on focusing every day. And um, just staying focused on the goal, on the main goal, and just taking it day by day. You played Restar two times this year, and we have to admit that they were really good, you know, in both of these games. What kind of lessons did you take uh, from both, both of these uh, matchups against them in order, you know, to finally at some day to, to beat them? Um, really, I would I would just say uh, we just we just have to watch film. You know, um, coaches big on us watching film. We dissect every play in the game, so we just have to just keep watching film and just guys have to just keep learning because it's not going to take one or two guys to beat that team. I mean, an experienced team like that, they know what to do. Um, they have a game plan. And so um, it's going to take everyone to come together and people to step up and just play and do what we got to do to come together and beat them. So, it, Zach, you were lucky, or let's say you put yourself in a situation where you've been lucky to have been coached by coaches like uh, David Blatt, Shovlin Sisikavich, etc. Messina, now it's Jelko Bradovic. Is there any, like, can you take at least one lesson from every coach or one thing uh, you learned about basketball or the way how you should approach uh, basketball, should approach practices, games and, and whatsoever? Yeah, I mean, it's kind of, uh, it's, cra it's, it's crazy that you say that because people tell me that and I just, I'm just kind of living in the moment as They say, be where your feet are. I just try to be where my feet are. And so uh, it just makes me go back to my first year when I was in Israel, the coach mm. uh, Ariel that I had, and he just wanted to play fast. And it was perfect for me. And then when I got to Blatt, I had to learn, okay, like I can't just play fast all the time. Like I'm on the highest level. I have to be able to see the game and I have to slow down and see plays for themselves. And um, Blatt, I mean, he took me to this highest level and I'm appreciative of that. And then When I got the SARS, it was all about thinking the game because of the team that we had. We couldn't just play fast all the time. We had to play smart and we had to um, run plays and um, situations and different things like that. So SARS was really big on teaching me how to think the game and see the game, how he sees it basically as a one of the best point guards ever to play in Europe. And then when I got to Messina, he had just came back from the NBA recently and we had all the Uh, high pedigree players as well. Um, everyone was coming together, so we all respected each other. We had a great group. And so it was just really everyone was just mature about it. We just went about our ways and um, we were just, we really would police ourselves as players and we would hold each other accountable. And um, it was great to be able to learn um, championship pedigree, um, how to win at a high level. We be we almost won everything. and. Um, even losing, how to be able to regroup after big losses and come back to the next game. And so, um, and today with Coach Zelko, it's kind of all just coming under full circle. It really reminds me of uh, my experience with Saris a lot, but just obviously Zelko is the originator kind of of Saris because <laughs> he played for him and he uh, looks to him for so much. So um, I'm really just blessed, man. I just learn, I just take everything day by day and just, 
take my experience in and I'm just continuing to try to just get better and just try to uh, just be the best teammate, the best person that I could be to help teams win titles and hold hold myself accountable to be able to give my all, blood, sweat and tears to the team. You mentioned uh, Shadas as a student of Jelko. What's the biggest, let's say, difference and similarity at the same time between them? Oh man, ah, difference? Um, man, it's, it's, it's hard to say, man. They're so similar that in the ways that they do things. Um, obviously, Zelko's the originator, so I've, I guess that he has more. It, I would say the difference is Saris has the system, you know, mm. but um, even at Barcelona, he's made a lot of tweaks to it with the uh, different personnel that he's had. Mm. But I would just say that maybe the system, because Saris tweaked it to be like a system, and Zelko is just, I mean, they're both great coaches. It's hard to say, but Zelko is... I mean, the experience that I've had with him, we just been trying to play up and down and really just um, get the most of like our our young guys' legs and how fast they can run and how we can play as a team in the up tempo, hard nose style. So it's crazy that after four years in Europe, you're coming to Partizan and they want you to be kind of a mentor for for this young team. What kind of conversations you have about mentorship, both with Jelko Bradovic, with uh, Kevin Punter, for example? Because as I've understood, he expects a lot from you guys as a key players, you know, to show the example for, for all this uh, young group of guys. Um, I mean, me and KP, we talk a lot. You know, um, everyone's had their different experiences. Uh, me and KP both had different experiences to bring us together to Milan. And then when we had that experience to play 93 games together, Um, to go from July to the end of June was so high, ups and downs. You know, it was like the longest year ever. It felt like it was never going to end. And so to bring that and to come here and to be with a lot of these guys, it's their first experience ever playing in Europe, you know, to come and you don't have no experience and you play for Zelko right away, it can be a lot. So we just try to just help guys day by day. And um, we really just about the process and just focusing in. And we knew that to come here it was going to be a challenge that coach wanted us to accept and we were all about accepting it and we're all about every stage of it and um, doing whatever it takes to win and to be able to get to where we can be where we want to be in the end of this. What kind of mentor you're trying to be and what was the best mentorship example uh, you experienced in your career? Oh man, I had some great mentorships. I mean, starting when I got to uh, I mean, my first year in Israel, I had Jacobin Brown, D'Angelo Harrison. That was just to get acclimated to Europe. Like I had never had an experience. So just finding little things like uh, in your routine, like what are you doing every day? That's going to help you keep your mind right and ready to play. And then when I got to uh, Greece, um, I had Spanulis. Spanulis. You know, he was huge for me. Um, as far as just mentality and the player that I wanted to be and he saw how locked in I was and I wanted to be great. And so he really uh, kind of honed in on me and would say little things to me. And um, Princesses as well, Papa Nicolau, guys like that. Um, they really helped me a lot in my experience. And then going to Zalgiris, um, Yank, um, I would say in Zalgiris, it was just more of a team. Everybody was together. I had Ula, Tom, walk up. Nigel Hayes, Jock Landell, everybody was together as a team and we just came together as a team and we were able to be like a family and go out there and just try to be a great product of what coach wanted. And then in Milan, um, just playing with the high pedigree players, um, Kyle. Um, Kyle is obviously a great mentor. Malcolm Delaney is a great mentor. Um, They have different styles, but it's just Gigi Detome, Chacho Rodriguez. I mean, I could go down the line. They just have great, everyone was different in their style. Like I could go to Gigi and talk about something completely different than what Chacho or what Malcolm would talk about. And then Kyle. What about Malcolm? Because, you know, we kind of get got used to it that, oh, Kyle Hans is a mentor for yeah. everybody. You mentioned all these veterans like Chacho and, and, and Detome. What about Malcolm? Uh, Malcolm is just great. He's a great mentor for, um, I would say like for people like me, like I come from the inner city, you know, so like we have these ways about us and how we are certain and like growing up in condition, you know, and we go about ourselves and stuff like that. And so Malcolm is a great mentor to somebody who rose up 
and was able to be at the highest level, you know, coming from that inner city, that struggle and having that mentality and learning how to be at the highest level with it and learning how to go about it in the right ways. And um, he's won a lot in his career, been places everywhere he's won. He's a winner. And so um, we just spoke every, I mean, I was with him daily. So uh, that's one of my uh, big brothers in a sense. So uh, he helped me daily and just staying locked in and um, just dealing with different things and during the process and stuff like that. He's just a great guy. He's hilarious. He's super funny. Great dude. What impresses you the most about uh, these young partisan uh, players? Um, I would say just resilience. Um, the fact that they're willing to just come in and day by day and just keep working. Um, that's what you have to have when you uh, work it for Coach Obradovich, and when you're trying to achieve the goals that we're trying to achieve, I mean, I would say it's not it's not extremely easy to be a young player and to be in a situation like that, you know, but um, they have resilience and they're coming in day by day and um, just showing up, trying to accept the challenge. And that's what it takes, you know, when you're trying to play for the best ever, a lot of people say. So it's, it takes this and we just have to keep going. I heard that you used to stay late after practices and you used to wait for everybody to leave the court just to enjoy the full gym uh, for yourself. Yeah. So tell me, who is that guy from Partizan who leaves the court uh, the latest, let's say, before you? Who, who, uh, who keeps? Um, it's, it's, it's different now because uh, Coach Obradovich, his, his style is different. He, we have shooting after practice. So everyone is, we always stay like an hour practice shooting and stuff like this. So, um, but we've been having one-on-ones. Uh, we start to play as a, as a group, the bigs, or like sometimes the guards, I'll jump in with the guards because I want to get defense on the guards. But it's really been fun as far as just having that, um, the young guys wanting to play one-on-one -on -one and really wanting to challenge themselves and stuff like that and everyone. Um, having a competitive spirit, wanting to get better. And so uh, we've started to have that um, a lot more. I would say a lot of the guys have been jumping in. Um, I can't really name like one specific guy, but a lot of guys have been jumping into one-on-ones, trying to get better. You know, it's different when you have like an older team, like guys like, all right, I got to rest, I got to get my mm -hmm. ice. But when you have younger guys, like they want to like do that. So I'm like, okay, like it reminds me of when I was growing up at the park, you know, just playing one-on-one. -on -one. And that, that's something in your heart and your basketball heart that will never leave you, so. T tell me about uh, Kevin Punter. What do you like the most about this guy? Ah, oh, man, he hilarious. Uh, <laughs> like I was saying, uh, when we were in Milan, it was me, uh, me, him, and Malcolm. We were together uh, a lot because we were, at the time, like, single. And so um, we were together the most going out to dinners. Uh, we really got to be close and just going, watching the Super Bowl together, little things like that, moments like that. And so we really got to grow a bond. And it's crazy that we're, we're here together. You know, still it's kind of crazy to me when I think of like just deja vu moment. Uh, when I first met him, I didn't think I would be playing with him for three years, you know, but he one of my uh, close friends in Europe, great guy, one of the hardest workers I know. Uh, he works for everything that he get. I respect him as a worker. Um, I feel that we both have the same locked in and focusedness about us to uh, try to work through the depths and try to be where we want to be. And so um, that's my guy. I mean, my brother, we just trying to just take this thing day by day. And uh, he's the first person that I met from New York. So okay. it's different for me. You know, I'm from Texas, so I'm from the South. I got Southern, everything about South. So he's the first person from New York that I met. So he's just so different. I always kid, uh, joke him about that. So. You have a big mouth, uh, both of you together, and uh, I, I remember that, for example, Milan, Milan's people, they were, um, they remember some funny situations where you're always uh, like uh, saying, oh, rebound, rebound, before the second free throw your opponent is shooting, for example. You're always <laughs> yelling rebound, you know, to distract him. Uh, KP also has a big mouth, and he's yeah. famous with his trash talk. What do, you, what do you like the most about his trash talk or all these celebrations after the party shots? Because he's always, he always has something to say uh, after three-pointers. Um, for me, uh, I mean, we just high, we just, uh, our emotions can just get real high into mm -hmm. these games. You know, I mean, you're a competitor, so you're just trying to play. And I mean, you have these emotions come out. It's not like you can like just hone it back, you know, so it just naturally comes out. And so it's good to see him do that. I don't really be hearing what he be saying. A lot of times the crowd is going crazy and I can't hear it. But um, 
just to see him in those moments and to see him uh, shine. I'm always here for him. I'm always uh, looking to protect him as a as a guard. You know, like guys try to guard him in different ways and stuff like that. So I'm looking to protect him and do whatever it takes to protect all our teammates and just keep going forward and to see him shining is always great. And because I know the work that he puts in on his game and the focusness that it takes to do what is a custom nightly, so. Both of you, it seems like that both of you were key signings of Partizan and Jelko Bradovic. And knowing the history of Jelko Bradovic, knowing the ambitions of this uh, Partizan project, I was just wondering, do you guys talk with uh, KP? Do you guys think about it that do you feel a pressure not to fail Jelko, you know? He kind of selected you as his focal points of this new project. Did, did you ever think about it or did you ever talk about it? Um, honestly, I don't think about failing. I mean, um, in general, it's just, we're just locked in on just getting better day by day, focusing on ourselves to be the best version of ourselves to give to the team, you know? Because if we're not the best version of ourselves, then as leaders, we, gonna, we would be failing the team. But I don't think about failing or anything like this. Uh, that's not really, that's never been my mindset going into Europe. Um, I'm blessed that coach chose us to be here um, with our winning pedigree and what we've been able to achieve at, at this moment. Um, and we just have to just continue to just be, as leaders, just stay locked in and keep our belief systems high and just realize that what we're going to, what we're doing, I mean, we have a lot of guys that don't have the experience. And so it's on us to take our experience and try to help them and give them experience and get them to a point where they feel comfortable and where we going together, you know, and it's not just us two. Um, it's going to take our whole team to achieve what we achieve. And so it's really just keeping everybody involved, keeping everybody in the loop and just realizing that it's going to be all of us because in the end of the day, I mean, that's what it's going to take. I mean, it's, it can't be two on five as much as experience and we try to have quality and different things like that. So, but it's going to take five and even more. So it's going to take the whole group and all the fans as well that come and support us as well. It's going to take all of us to uh, achieve the goals that we want. I remember when, when I talked with KP uh, before the season, he said that it hurts uh, to him to this day uh, that he missed that good shot in the final four in the semifinals against Barcelona. It was the last shot of Milan and he missed it and then Corey Higgins uh, thing happened. Did you talk about that situation? And I was just wondering if you thought how things could have changed if, for example, KP made that shot, you made the finals. And what's interesting that, you know, you won against FS both times that mm -hmm. season. And it's, it's funny to see that you both left Milan after that. I mean, a lot of uh, things have changed. Did you ever think about it? Um, maybe like in the summer, mm. I thought about it. But now being in f almost in March 2022, I don't mm. think about it. I mean, but uh, I mean, it would have been huge to go to the final with that group. I mean, it was the first time in 30 years that Milan had been to the Final Four. First time, I think in, I can't remember how many years that they had went to the playoff. I think it was 10 years or eight years mm -hmm. or something like that. And so with that group alone, that year was just so long and we were able to achieve so much. And we're able, we were just blessed to be able to come together as a group, you know, and really just click on all cylinders and have a good group of guys and build that nucleus and that foundation for our personalities to click like that and everything to just go the way it went. For us to win that, that many games and win that many titles in that season was really a blessing. Um, so it was just crazy that we both ended up here. It was just ironic. But uh, I don't really think about like how it would have changed. I mean, I think it probably would have still happened the same. I'm not sure. I mean, we would have to ask Milan management. I'm not sure. But uh, I mean, we here now and we trying to win ch titles here now. And um, we just have to take that experience and try to just help everyone and and do what we do here now. So. The last one uh, for Jargis fans. Uh, the last time the roster you've, you've been part of was amazing. When you look at, at these guys right now, for example, Grigonis in CSKA, you were in Partizan, Jokobait is shining in Barcelona, Wokop in Olympiacos, Lendale in, in San Antonio. What was special about that group and how do you feel watching all these players, so many players, uh, being successful on big teams? 
Um, I would say uh, the group that we had, we were just we were just fighters, man. Um, we really just fought. I mean, coach was on us hard. Sars coached us hard. I, I probably got coached the hardest out of that group, honestly. But um, we were just fighters, man. We just showed up and we were resilient. I mean, we showed up. I mean, I remember during that time we went during the losing streak and then we went during the crazy winning streak. And so um, we were just really resilient. We showed up every day. We worked really hard. We saw the talent that we had as a group. Um, and so we just stayed locked in. And um, during the losing streak we, won, we went on, I think we lost like every game by like two or three points. It was something crazy like this. And um, Gregonis got hurt. And so we took that on and we were just able to just keep fighting through that. And we were just, I would just say about that group the most, we were just fighters. Um, we really wanted it to get the most out of that season. We wanted to take all the trophies and the titles and different things that we could. Um, we didn't care about what no one else was saying outside of the group. We just stayed locked in and we were a family and that helped us win two titles that season. Before COVID shut us down, we were on track to be in the EuroLeague playoff. And we, I just learned a whole lot from those group of guys. And just, that was the first time in Europe that I had like a lot of my peers with me, everyone born in kind of like the same year. And we were just going together, just taking it day by day, just fighting and just working. So it was great, man. It was a great experience. My experience was um, unbelievable. What do you think uh, Shadows was hardest for you? Maybe because you kind of accept that kind of uh, coaching and maybe he wanted you to take as an example for other uh, foreigners, for example? For sure. I think, I, think, I think he also knew that I could take it. Yeah. Um, Certain guys you can't be hard like that on, but I feel like he knew that he knew what I wanted and he knew um, what I was locked in on trying to be as a player. He saw that. That's not something that you really have conversations about or anything like that. I feel like coaches can kind of see that in players naturally. If guys want to be great or want to be locked in and want to be the best that they can be for themselves and to give to the team. And so I feel like he was able to see that and he just locked in on me and was able to coach me harder. And I was able to thank God, you know, take it um, in the right ways. And it's helped me a lot in my career. It's helped me go on in the years that I haven't had him as a coach. And who did surprise you the most from that group of, of these players? Maybe the young one, Yokobaitis, who is killing right now in, in yeah. the Copa del Rey finals, for example. Yeah, I mean, it's crazy. We were shooting partners when I was at Zalgiris. Every day we shot together. So um, I saw his work ethic. I saw his drive. I saw uh, when, what he wanted to be. And the best thing about his game is, I would say is, the best thing about his game is how hard he plays. You know, it's not really, I wouldn't, I mean, he's obviously skilled and he's very talented, but I feel like it started with how hard he wanted, how hard he plays. Like he willing to dive, he willing to get coached hard. He willing to um, bust his eye open for the team. You know, like that season he bust his eye open a couple of times. Like he had a couple, a black eye. Like it was just like, it's a little stuff like that, like that. You notice with like guys like that, like, oh man, he really wants it. Like, and then you forget, like at the time he was 18 years old. So I, for, I would forget this all the time. Like, wow, he's 18 years old. Like, this is crazy. And then I saw him in Milan. He had grew like an inch and a half taller. It was like crazy. Like, I was like, wow. Like, and we speaking on the floor and he joking with me and stuff. So um, I just wish him all the best for his career, all the success and that, that he just stays healthy and that he keeps going, that he keeps growing within his game and staying locked in and just respecting the grind and keep working, you know. He has that uh, unique swag in Lithuania, right? This is something you which, uh, what he learned from you? I mean, I would I wouldn't want to give credit to myself. I mean, he, he's a funny guy, so I mean, we would always joke and stuff all the time. So he's one of my favorite teammates as well. So, but uh, hey, he's doing what he's doing. He's handling business and all the best and all the success for him. Exactly, Day, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks a lot for your time thanks, and best of luck with Partizan Project. Thank you. Thank you for having me. All the best. All the best greetings and success for Lithuanian fans and everybody stay healthy. And follow basketnews.com. <laughs>